Hi colleagues, this is again Michał of Board Games Chronicle. Today we'll be looking at another faction in the Falling Sky. This will be Edui. Uh, they will be the topic of today's, today's discussion and today's material. If you'd like to learn more about Belga, the link is below, and about the general course of play, it's also below this video. What we'll be analyzing? First of all, we'll take talk a little about the Arduino on the map, who they are, and what's their background. And then we will talk about player map, about commands and specials. We'll also touch on the victory conditions. Of course, as always, some strategic tips. And what I really like to do, analysis of the most interesting events. So if we look at the map, the Andui are pretty centrally positioned in the vicinity of Rome, Provincia, but also Arveni. So they are pretty close to both those directions. As per the game description and, and introduction, they at the beginning definitely cooperate with Rome and there are a lot of events which allows them to trade with Rome, to use the pieces, uh, troops, uh, auxilia and, and warbands together. So there is a lot, a lot, a lot of in common. Uh, they have very precarious position because they can be hit both by Rome and, and by Rome and by Arveni. But look, their uh, home province is a small one. I do only one point, so that to some extent preserves them because in order to go there to crush them, it takes time. And to be quite honest, it's usually what happens with I do Everybody ignores them. Uh, historically, they were the, uh, let's say, rival confederation to Arveni, a much smaller confederation, but very well led, and, and then they were known for the king. Uh, in the Great Revolt of 52 BC, they finally were convinced to join the Gallic uprising, but before it, they were pretty... Um, pretty supportive to Rome. By the way, Julius Caesar, Caesar was using the common approach, uh, uh, divide and conquer. With some they fought, the Romans fought with Armenia, the Romans fought bitterly with Belgae, with some they traded like with, with Dewey. So here they are centrally, and as you can see, in here you can only put a Dewey um, and do we token, so nobody else can put the allies. Although for Romans, if there is nothing there, it's also positive. How does their player mode look like? First of all, they have only 20 weapons, which is the smallest number from all the factions. They definitely are not a warring machine. We have place for eight uh, allies and citadels. They can put two citadels and six allies. And we have a lot of cities around where we can put those citadels here, 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 here. Yeah, so definitely very, very space. Mm, putting the allies and citadels is actually what we should do. Because if we, when we look further into the details, that would be one of their mm, uh, victory conditions. Yeah. It will be one of the victory conditions. So this is it in general, Edwin, with player map, color, position of the map. Now let's go to something interesting, commands and specials. So I will not be going in such details through the common Gallic commands. Uh, I pretty thoroughly discussed them in the Belgae session. Uh, you can check them there. I will only very thoroughly, very um, uh, briefly go through them. So we have Rally, which allows to place allies, which allows to place citadels or to, to recruit warbands. Uh, note that here they can always recruit one warband, regardless of the control or not. There is March, uh, for which they also have to pay. Uh, for Rally, they pay one. Uh, it can't be devastated. For March, they also pay one or two if devastated. March for the Gallic factions, just a reminder, is from. So for the Gallic faction, you pay for each originating places. So March is just, just, just to move the units and also make them hidden. So if we move even in place, we can hide the warbands. 
rate is getting stealing the resources. You can steal from land, but it cannot be devastated, or you can steal from another player, but they cannot have fort or citadel. When you have battle, which I also discussed, which allows you to attack the opponent, the opponent can retreat and halve the losses. Um, the Edui, at least in the base game, does not have a leader. So they actually do not have any benefit of leader in the battle. And uh, on the other hand, they are not limited uh, with the special abilities, because normally the special abilities can be used only in the um, region with leader or within one around it, but they can use it wherever they want. So in battle, we do not have a bonus for this, but we have a bon uh, other bonus. Now, from the special abilities, we have a standard ambush, which each and every faction, Gallic faction has, and I think Rom Romans also have this special ability. I would like to focus, just like previously, on the two very specific to Edui um, uh, special abilities, so trade and uh, suborn. Trade, as the name says, allows them to collect resources. How do we do it? First of all, supply line. A supply line is a concept of, of the line um, of uh, regions, one by one, from uh, Rome controlled provincia. I think, let's just check, let me check, because of course I played some time ago and my my. I might not remember correctly. Okay, so we have special ability and we have trade. Supply lines are to Cisalpinia, so they, they are here. And uh, this, is, uh, this is the chain of regions without a control, with a control of the owning faction, in this case, Edui, or with a faction which agrees for a supply line to be driven. The supply line is critical for Romans. We'll be talking about this in more detail with them. For Edui, it's important for trade because factions agree to supply line or not. Uh, usually, the supply line to, to Cisalpinia goes through the terrains which are controlled by Romans and by Edui. In this case, you see all goes for Romans and Edui areas. And what we do in supply lines, we add plus one resource, uh, plus one Edui resource, or plus two if Romans agree, for each Edui ally and citadel, each subdued tribe under Edui control, and if Roman agrees, each Roman ally under Edui control. So let me just simulate this. Mm. Let me see, let me do something like this. And I need uh, Roman ally. In such situation of a trade, let's say that the Edui would like to do the trade, and they say, okay, I'm performing the trade. I'm asking, first of all, the Romans, do they agree for the supply line? If they say yes, yeah, we have a supply line to the Cisalpinia, and we are getting two resources for this. Two resources for this, two for this, and two for this, eight in total. Probably I should say to Romans, please agree to the supply line. We'll give you one resource and we'll leave seven for ourselves. Something like this, and that's, that's, that's how the trade goes. Pretty powerful uh, special ability of, of um, Edwi because they can really get a lot, a lot of resources that way. By the way, we are also getting additional four resources each harvest. You might think, wow, why, why do they need so much resources? We don't have so many armies and so on. The answer is here. This is Saborn. Saborn is a key, key factor in victory for the Edui, because as you can see, uh, they need to have as many allies as possible. How do they do it, the Saborn? They buy allegiance or neutrality. It can be accompanied with rally, march, or raid. And this location, one region with a hidden Edui warband. No limitation by any leader. Simply hidden warband. And uh, what we do? They 
pay two resources per ally and one per other piece. Uh, in total, they can place and or remove up to three pieces. So maximally it can cost four. Two for ally and one for the uh, warbands uh, for the auxilia. So four is a lot. And you can see later on that if you have a special event, you can even double this. So spend eight per turn. That is why I do need those resources. So what we do, we place and or remove up to three pieces in one space where we have hidden warbands. Uh, at most one piece may be allied tribe. It can be citadel, uh, we place an uh, ally at subdued or others must be warbots and or auxilia. So let's see if we have such situation. Mm -hmm. What we can do here? When we do the suborn, we can first of all place one uh, ally, let me do it. We place one ally and we, for example, remove two mm, pieces, those pieces, and that costs us four. But as you can see, we took control of this. If we uh, combine suborn with rally, after such suborn, we can rally in this area, adding second um, ally or maybe adding a warp. Pretty cool, cool move. So this will be the commands and special abilities of the Edui Confederation. Now let us talk about those victory conditions. What are the victory conditions? You see, here is we strike other factions with most allies. Again, I didn't take this. Mm -hmm. Edui. Edui allied tribes and citadels has to exceed each other factions in order to win. So in simple terms, they need to have more allies and citadels than any other faction of the map. In this case, Arveni have two. Yeah? So um, other faction with most allies has two at this one time. They don't have any, they have one. So we need to have um, three to, to, to have more. Yeah? I do our tribes and citadels exceed each other faction. So they, uh, now looking at the strategy, what, what Edo usually do, and they spread on the map. This is the first thing they do. They do not accumulate a huge force in one place, they spread. And then they use the suborn to put the allies and probably accompanied by rally to put even more uh, allies as I was showing you here before. They are very difficult to, 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 to conquer and combat uh, when they have one hidden urban here, one hidden urban here, there. It's really annoying and it's a real nuisance, uh, as you can see, especially with some combination of interesting events. And now let's look at those interesting events. Let's start immediately with the most powerful uh, event for Edoi. Con Victolitavis. Uh, Saborn is maximum two regions. Normally, Saborn is within one region, but with this card, we can do it two regions. Very powerful, but also very resource intensive and resource consuming. This is uh, a must for, for Edui, and I strongly suggest if you could uh, to, to always take this event. Second event connected with capability uh, is regarding trade. Uh, and we trade here its resources regardless of supply line. So regardless if we have a supply line, sometimes you can be cut, sometimes the Romans might not want to work with us, it will still yield the resources. Not a game breaking event, definitely not such a good one like the one which doubles the suborn, but still interesting. A very specific event, uh, this event is permanent in, ex in, uh, in expansion because Divitiacus is added as a, uh, a Dewey leader. What does this allow? If Edui and Romans agree, the command or defense in battle may treat Edui Warbands or Auxilia who are together as the other. And yeah, the shade that capability is of course negative uh, about Romans and we may not transfer resources to one another. So it hinders, for example, the trade. 
but it could be cool in 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 in, uh, in, in the fight. And last, which I would like to draw your attention to, is shifting loyalties. Choose one capability of any faction, remove it from play. Very nasty event, which Edwig can do, because it can remove, for example, Legion capability of Romance, or this rally capability of Belgae, or some very powerful elite uh, Arveni capabilities. Really, really nasty thing. And, and uh, can can shake a lot in the game. All in all, the Edoic events are not the strongest in the game. I think that one is a must. Double Saborn, the rest are more or less uh, optional, so I would not insist on one or other them necessarily being played. That's all for today. Uh, we presented Edoic. You might be surprised that uh, those guys are winning as equally as Belgae. This is the Rom and Erveni who are the rarest to, to, to win the game. Uh, Edwin and Belgae are definitely the ones who can score the victories most often. Thank you for today. If you'd like, uh, if you'd like uh, to see more video like this, kindly to subscribe. If this um, video and material was to your liking, kindly please give thumbs up. Uh, in the uh, um, comment section, kindly please share your opinions, questions, remarks, and also below the video you can find the links to other materials in the series. Thank you very much for today and see you in the last two episodes. The uh, next one will be about Arveni and the last about the most complex faction, the Raw. Thank you.